Hello everyone. If you want to access local resources on your home network from outside of your home network, like from any internet connection, you need to set up a VPN server on your home network. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the open VPN server on your TP-Link router. In my example, I'm using the TP-Link AXE75, which is the AXE 5400 router, but the instructions I'm going to show you apply also to all TP-Link routers that support the OpenVPN server protocol and also to other routers that support the same protocol. All you have to do is to match the instructions I'm going to show you on my TP-Link router to your router. So let's start first by logging in to the administration page of the TP-Link router. To go to the administration page of the TP-Link router, open any web browser and key in TP-Link wifi.net and hit enter. If TP-Link Wi-Fi.net doesn't work, you need to get the IP address of your TP-Link router. To do this, you need to start a command prompt. So in the search box, type CMD and then select command prompt. And here type ipconfig and scroll up if you have many IP addresses. And when you find a default gateway, this will be the IP address of the router. So you can use this IP address also to log in to your TP-Link router. So now let's close this. Here you need to put the password for the administration for your TP-Link router and then hit enter to log in. Click on advanced and the first step is to log in with the TP-Link ID on the router so that you can create a dynamic DNS entry and I'm going to show you how to do this. So on the left here click on TP-Link ID and if you don't have a TP-Link ID which is free by the way, you can click on sign up and sign up for one. So here I already have a TP-Link ID. I'm going to put the user and password and then I'm going to log in. So when you put everything, click on login. And this is the first step finished. So now we need to create a dynamic DNS entry. Why we need a dynamic DNS entry? Because if your TP-Link router is connected to the internet with a dynamic IP, this IP will change and the VPN client will not be able to access your home network when this IP changes. When you create a dynamic DNS entry, even if the IP changes, the dynamic DNS entry will stay the same and you will use it always from your client to access your home network. And this way, you don't need to reconfigure all your clients each time the IP address of your router changes. So now we need to go back to advanced. So click on advanced once again. And then here you need to click on dynamic DNS to create the dynamic DNS entry. And here for the service provider, keep it as it is, TP-Link. And then click on register here and then put a unique name. So if the name was used by someone else, you'll get an error message. But here I'm going to put a name that I know that is not used. So KSTTP for KSTEC TP link. And then I'm going to click on save. And if the operation is successful, you'll get a message that the operation succeeded. And this is the name that we're going to use afterwards. So here you need to copy this name. So select it, right click on it, and then click on copy. Now the next step is to enable the OpenVPN server on your TP-Link router. So on the left here, scroll until you find a VPN server, which is this one, click on it. And then here you have all the protocols that are supported by your router. Here I'm going to show you the OpenVPN server, as I said. So click on OpenVPN. And then the first thing here is to enable it. So select enable. And you have these options. So the first one is the service type. I advise you to keep it on UDP because it's a connectionless protocol and it's faster than the TCP protocol. For the service port, keep it as it is. For the VPN subnet, also keep it as it is, net mask. And for the client access, here you can choose if you want your clients to access only the home network, so when they connect, or also you want them to browse the internet through your home network. So here I'm going to select internet and home network. And here you need to generate a certificate. So click on generate and wait for it. It takes a couple of minutes for the certificate to generate. So when the certificate is generated, you'll get this success message. Directly afterwards, you need to click on export so that you can export the configuration file. So click on export and the configuration file will be exported. I'm going to choose save so that to save it by default in the downloads folder. And here it is saved. 
and click on save on the bottom so to save everything so now we need to go to the downloads folder to change something in this configuration file so this is the downloads folder and this is the file that we just exported to it so right click on it and then choose open with and then click on notepad and here it is and i told you we need to change something in it and remember we copied the dynamic dns name so here we need to change the remote with the ip that is here with the dynamic dns name that we created so simply paste it here which is kstp.tplinkdns.com and keep everything else as it is and just save the file now we need to copy this file to usb key and then i'm gonna go to a client that is connected to a network that is external of my home network and i'm gonna show you how to connect with openvpn to my home network so let's copy the file and this is the usb drive let's paste it here and then let's switch to the client so this is the client machine and by the way everything you saw until now it is on windows 11 machines but also you can use it on windows 10 and also there's a client openvpn client for mac os and for linux so you need to open a web browser to download the openvpn connect client on any client machine that you wanted to access the vpn server so let's open the web browser and then go to this website openvpn.net slash client and then press on enter and then here click on download openvpn connect for windows and let's save it and here it is saved now we need to launch it so that to install it so i'm gonna click on open file here you can of course alternatively go to the downloads folder and launch it and let's set up the open vpn connect client so next and then you need to accept the agreement of course feel free to read it if you want to and then click on next and then click on install click yes if prompted and then click on finish and the first time you launch the client it will give you this agreement to read it so feel free also to read it and then click on agree and now we need to import the open vpn configuration file here so click on upload file and then click on browse and we need to go to the usb key where we save the file to select it so here it is select it and then click on open and before i click on connect i told you that this pc is connected to another network completely so the test i'm gonna do after i connect is accessing my nas server that is on my home network through this client so i'm gonna now try to access it before connecting and you're gonna see that it's not accessible and then we're gonna try to access it after connecting and you're gonna see that we're gonna succeed so let's open file explorer and let's open a new tab and let's put the nas address here so it is this one and you're gonna see that it will not work i'm gonna give it a moment here so for you to see that it's not working and you notice a message saying that it's not working so let's cancel it let me close this tab and let's go back to the client and connect and here it is connected as you see so let's try now to access the nas server on the network once again and here you see that it is working now the configuration i just showed you is for a router that is connected to the modem of the isp directly if you have a router that is behind another router at your home so for instance if your isp provided you with a router and you configured the tp-link router behind the isp's router you need to set up port forwarding on the isp's router and i made a video on this specially i'm gonna leave a link for this video in the description you can check it out and this way you're gonna succeed with your open vpn server whether your router is connected directly to the modem or if it is behind another router if you have any questions or comments feel free to put them in the comment section below and i'll be more than happy to answer all your questions and all your comments i want to thank you all for watching if you liked my video please share it subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up i'm eloy from knowledge sharing tech see you in the next video